In my last video, I have introduced four main types of ways that you can find Chinese suppliers online. But the fact is, the number of people that find products or find suppliers by coming over to China is much larger than just sourcing products online such as using Alibaba. Because for most importers, especially those who purchase large quantities, they don't trust that supplies from the internet and they more prefer to come over to China, talk to a supplier face to face and to see their manufacturers, to see the production lines, then they can decide if the supplier is worthy to start the business. However, for people that haven't been to China or haven't purchased any product from China yet, it's really a big challenge for them to come to here to find suppliers because there's big language barrier and a cultural difference. And also, they have no ideas about which place in China that they can go to find suppliers. So in today's video, I will show you the three main types of way that you can find supplies in China. And this method are usually used by most of those professional importers. Welcome to watch the Import from China Guide video series. I'm Jing, the founder of Jing Sourcing, the leading China sourcing company since 2015. This is the module two of the tutorial and I will teach you knowledge about how to find and choose reliable suppliers. So make sure you got subscribed. Before I start to introduce different kind of way that you can find supplies in China, let me give you some quick but very important information so you can get well prepared before coming over to China. Tip 1. You cannot come to China recently. Because of the unexpected pandemic this year, foreigners is not allowed to come to China recently. Our government decided to close the border for all foreigners until the situation in other countries become better. So, for the most updated information about when foreigners are allowed to come to China, and it will better to inquire the Chinese embassy of your country because the policy really depends on different countries. Tip 2. Have a VPN. Because in China, websites like Google, Facebook, or YouTube, they are banned. So, you have to install a VPN on your phone or laptop to access these websites. And my best suggestion is Astro. It's not free, but it's very fast and stable. Tip number three, use interpreter apps. The language barrier will be the biggest problem that you will face in China. And over 99% A population here in China that they cannot speak English like me. So either you need to hire an interpreter which costs you maybe 50 to 100 dollars a day, or you can simply use the iFly import app. 这是中国最好用的语音输入和翻译软件，而且是免费的。this is the best voice input and translation software in China, and it is free. I guess you can't wait to learn what is the best way to find supplies by visiting China. So firstly, let me introduce and review the top one most popular method, that is visiting the trade shows. I think trade show is the most effective way to find suppliers offline no matter how small or how big your business is as long as you can purchase over there 500 US dollars or 1,000 US dollars for one product. Suppliers on those Chinese trade shows, they are either manufacturer or trading companies. So most of them, they will set a minimum order quantity, which is about this number that you can start ordering product from them. Even though you can find a lot of Chinese suppliers when you are visiting trade show in Las Vegas, Germany, or Dubai. However, they are just very small part of what you can find here in Chinese trade shows. And it's also very easy to understand that for Chinese suppliers, going to other countries to attend trade shows is very expensive. Those suppliers are more likely to sell you higher price on the product. So if you want to find suppliers who can offer very competitive price, or you want to see more new Chinese made products, Definitely, you need to come to China for trade shows. Here is a question. What kind of trade show that you can visit in China? So in China, there are two types of trade shows. 
The first type is the comprehensive trade shows. The product category will be very wide range. That means you can find almost everything that you can imagine. So it will be very suitable for those people whose business is not in a specific product category or also suitable for people who want to discover product opportunities in many industries. However, the numbers of this kind of trade show in China is very limited. Canton Fair is the largest one with no doubt. And the second one maybe is the East China Fair, but it has less product categories such like machinery, electronics, furniture, medical products, and others. That means if you can come to China for the Canton Fair either on April or October, then you don't need to visit any comprehensive type of trade shows. The second type of the trade shows are those in a specific industry. There are hundreds or even over than 1,000 this kind of trade shows that you can visit in China. If your business only focuses on a certain product category, then this type of trade show is more suitable for you than those comprehensive trade shows like Canton Fair. Well, there are so many trade shows in China, so which one is the most worthy to visit? And also, which cities in China that you should go that you can find good trade shows? My suggestion is that no matter the trade show is the comprehensive type or just focus on one specific industry, you always need to visit the best and the largest. Though small trade shows is just wasting your time. The number one recommendation is the Canton Fair, which is also the, one of the largest trade shows in the world. It's located in Guangzhou, and you can take direct flight from main airport of most countries to here. This trade show will host it twice a year, one in April and another one in October. Each time it has three phases, and each phase will have different kind of product categories. The Canton Fair's time schedule is fixed in every year, so it's very easy for you to arrange the next trip for coming here. Well, Canton Fair has a disadvantage that you should know. That is, there is a four days gap between each phase. So if you want to see electronic products in phase one and also home products in phase two, that means you have to waste around four days for staying in China between these two phases. And if you are also interested in the products in the phase three, that means at least you need to stay in China for half a month. Because of the impact by the coronavirus, the Canton Fair Spring Edition is canceled. They changed it to an online trade show. But for most of suppliers and also customers, they are quite disappointed at these online Canton Fair because it lost the most important feature as a physical trade show. And everyone is looking forward to the next offline real Canton Fair. Except for going to Guangzhou to visit the Canton Fair, Hong Kong is also a very recommended city for you to find Chinese suppliers in trade shows. Even though Hong Kong doesn't have a comprehensive trade shows like the Canton Fair, but it has a big numbers of different kind of trade show for specific industries. If you want to visit cities in China mainland such like Guangzhou, you have to apply for a Chinese visa. But for people from most countries, you don't need apply any visa for visiting Hong Kong for a short time. You can go to Wikipedia to search visa policy of Hong Kong to get more information about this. For most of Chinese manufacturers or trading companies, trade shows in Hong Kong are their favorite, except for the Canton Fair. Because trade shows in Hong Kong can attract a lot of foreigner buyers. One of their favorite trade shows in Hong Kong is Hong Kong Electronic Fairs for all type of electronic products and it will be hosted twice a year, the Spring Edition and Autumn Edition. The Spring Edition is hosted from 13th to 16th April, which is just right before the phase one of the Canton Fair. And the Autumn Edition is hosted from 13th to 16th October, which is just right before the phase two of the Canton Fair Autumn Edition. The Hong Kong Gifts and the Premier Fairs is also one of the most famous trade shows and it's hosted from 27th to 30th April. Trade show in the gift industry always have very wide product categories. You can always see 
products like electronics, toys, gifts, party products, and more. And this trade show is hosted just during the three days gap between the Phase 2 and the Phase 3 Canton Fair, the Spring Edition. The Mega Show is also another trade show in the gift industry, and it's very popular for the past few years. And of course, it's one of the most favorable trade shows that Chinese suppliers want to go. It's hosted from the 20th to 23rd October, which is during the three days gap between the Phase 1 and the Phase 2 Canton Fair, the Autumn Edition. Did you see that? For all these popular trade shows in Hong Kong, they either hosted a few days before the Canton Fair or just during the gap days between two phases of the Canton Fair. So it's very recommended for you to apply a Chinese visa. Then you can visit trade shows in both Guangzhou and Hong Kong in April and October, which is during the Canton Fair period. And it just takes one hour for traveling by the train between these two cities. In addition, the B2B trading platform Global Source, they also have a lot of trade shows that hosted in Hong Kong for products in different industries. Their trade shows are also very worthy to visit and you can find more information on their exhibition webpage. Except for the Canton Fair and trade shows in Hong Kong, how can you find other trade show information in other cities in China? I recommend you to go to the website 10times.com to find more trade show information in China. This is the best website in the world to find information about trade show or events. In addition, you can also go to the website qufair.com to find more information. But this website is in Chinese because it's used for Chinese suppliers to find the trade shows. You can use Google to translate the website into your language. And in this way, you can discover a lot of trade shows in China that there are not so many foreigners are attending. If you haven't been to any trade show before, and let me tell you what is the correct way to deal with the Chinese suppliers on trade show and start the cooperation on business. What you need to do is just look at suppliers product to get their product category and also their contact information. Of course, you can talk a lot of detailed product information with the supplier at the booth, but the most important thing you need to make a note is about the minimum order quantity and also the price. And for the more detailed product information or specifications, you can just let the salesman send to your email. When the trade show is finished, then you can keep in touch with the supplier and negotiate with them the final price and the final purchasing quantity. And for most of cases, it's more likely to negotiate a lower price than you're placing order directly at the trade show. And if you want to purchase a product sample, then my suggestion is that you'd better to try it when the trade show is about to finish. Because a lot of suppliers, they are willing to sell out their samples instead of bring them home when they finish the trade show. But at the beginning days of the trade shows, they are not willing to sell your samples because they also need to show the product to other customers. If you are not able to come to China during the trade show period, or you want to purchase different kind of product for not very large quantity, but you prefer to finish the purchasing project during the visit in China, then the best way will be find supplies in wholesale markets. Well, I guess in your country, there's also wholesale markets, but the markets in China that I'm going to introduce will be quite different because suppliers from these wholesale markets, they're either the manufacturer or they are trading companies, but get a product directly from manufacturers that in long-term relationship, both of these two types of suppliers, they can offer you very competitive wholesale prices and sometimes even more lower than what you can get from suppliers on Trade Show or Alibaba. Even though there's wholesale market in almost every city in China, but over 99.5% of them are not worth you to visit because they are targeted for the local small quantity wholesale. So for most importers, I only recommend you 
go to visit wholesale markets in Yiwu or Guangzhou, these two cities. The Yiwu wholesale market, its official name is Yiwu International Trade City. It's no doubt the most recommended wholesale market that you need to visit because this is the largest wholesale market in the world. It has over than 50,000 suppliers for all kinds of product categories. It opens whole year round from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Saturday and it only closed for about 15 days during the Chinese New Year holiday. The market is located in Yiwu City, Zhejiang Province, which is about 200 kilometers away from Shanghai. And you can take direct train or flight from most of main cities in China to here. I'm also born and grew up in this city and I'm literally growing up inside the wholesale market because my parents, they are selling ties here. And our office is just in front of this wholesale market. So if you come to Yiwu next time, you are super welcome to visit us. The target client of this market is 50% overseas and 50% for the domestic. So at here, you can see a lot of foreign importers coming from different countries in the world. And many of them, they live here for years and every month they will ship a lot of products in containers to their countries. The biggest difference between this market and any other wholesale markets in China is that it's really huge. It's about five and a half kilometers long and the building has four floors. You can find most of consumer products that you can imagine inside this market and all the products they are well classified into different locations of this market. So it's very easy and convenient for any people to find a product inside the market. And you can just consider it as another canton fair, but it opens whole year round. So for people who cannot come to China during the canton fair period, coming to Yiwu market to find product or supplies will be also a very good option. Well, for other wholesale market in China that worth you to visit, all of them, they are specialized in a certain product category. That means you cannot source all kinds of products just in one place. Except for this Yiwu International Trade City, Yiwu also has a lot of other wholesale markets for a specific product category. For example, there's also a market for overstock products, machines, and fabrics. I really have so many information that I can share with you about Yiwu and the market here. So I will definitely make small videos about this topic in the future. But for this moment, you can still go to the description area to read one of my blog posts, the EU Wholesale Market Guide for more information. Even though the EU Wholesale Market has products like apparels, shoes, bags, cosmetics, watches, but if you really want to focus on this kind of product categories, then I still recommend you to go to Guangzhou to visit the wholesale market there. Because most of manufacturers for this kind of products, they are more close to Guangzhou. And there are over 100 wholesale markets in Guangzhou for this kind of products. Which means in Guangzhou, you will find more product and supply opportunities than EU for this kind of products. Well, the biggest disadvantage for visiting wholesale markets in Guangzhou is that it's not very friendly for new people because all these wholesale markets, they are quite separated in different corners of the city. So for people who haven't been to Guangzhou, it will be very hard for you to find where are those wholesale markets for different products. You will have no idea about which market is more suitable for you or which market sells much lower price. So before you come into Guangzhou to visit the wholesale market, you'd better to do a lot of homework or you need to stay longer days to get more familiar with the wholesale market environment here. Just like Yiwu, there are also a lot of foreigner buyers coming from different countries and they live here for years. So you definitely can talk with them to learn more experience. I have also written some blog articles about the wholesale market information in Guangzhou and you can find them in the description area of this video. If you want to see different products in just one place, then Yiwu and Guangzhou will be the only two cities that you can visit. For other cities, the wholesale market you can visit are usually in a specific industry. For example, if you only want to find electronic products, then with no doubt, 
you need to go to the wholesale market in the Hua Changbei area of Shenzhen. Even though you can find electronic products in the EU wholesale market, but the price there will be 10% higher than what you can get in Hua Changbei. And another example, if you want to buy fabrics, then you need to go to the fabric wholesale markets in Shaoxing Keqiao because this place has the largest fabric trading business in the world. In conclusion, if you have a specific product that you want to source, then I recommend you to do a deep research before you come into China. You need to find out is there any city in China has a wholesale market which is specialized in this product category. If you can find it, then you can get more product or supply options and of course lower price than the wholesale market in Yiwu or Guangzhou. I know there are a lot of people they only want to find the original real manufacturer because by doing this they can get the almost the lowest price in China. They don't like deal with trading companies or middlemen from wholesale markets. They also don't like to purchase from suppliers that you can find on trade show even though it's manufactured but they think the, their price will be more expensive. They prefer to find those manufacturers that don't go to any trade show or don't use Alibaba and they just sell products through trading companies instead of directly sell to foreigners. This kind of manufacturer can offer you the world lowest price. So the most effective way to find this kind of manufacturers is that you need to do the research about where is the industrial cluster for this product in China. In my previous video, I have mentioned that for Chinese manufacturers, if they are making the same type of the product, and they will be more likely to be located in the same area so that they can share a lot of common supply chain. And it's also easier to hire workers with related experience for the same type of products so that they can reduce a lot of cost on producing products. So you need to do the research about where is the industrial cluster in China for the product that you want to source. Let's take the cotton socks as an example. The simplest way is go to Alibaba to search this product and choose the province name which has the biggest numbers of suppliers. And then you need to pay attention to the first word of the supplier's name. It's either the name of the city or the province of where the supplier is located. If you can find many suppliers are from the same city, and then the next step is going to their contact us page to check their real address. If you can also find there are many suppliers are from the same town or industrial areas, then this place is very likely to be the industrial cluster of this product. If you have enough time to stay in China to find suppliers, then it's very recommended for you to travel to these industrial clusters. It's very easy to find many manufacturers that are making the same kind of product. In addition, you can also talk to the local people in the industrial cluster and pay them some money and let them bring you to find more manufacturers for the product that you are looking for. Even though finding Chinese manufacturers by this way is very time consuming, but it's still the most effective way to find the original manufacturer for the lowest price. And I can tell you the truth that a lot of large quantity buyers, including Chinese buyers, they usually use this method to find manufacturers. And sometimes they will spend a couple weeks just to find the best manufacturer for one product. If you think today's video is very valuable and it's very helpful for your import from China business, please give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And in this way, you can get the notice when I upload the next video. If you have any question about the method I mentioned today for finding supplies by visiting China, please let me know in the comment. Or if you have more better way to find Chinese suppliers, also tell me in the comment. And I will see you in the next video.